Hello everyone, my name is Adonis and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a love coming spread for all of my Pisces out there. So this is a love coming spread for all of my Pisces out there for the week of September 22nd until the 28th. So without any further ado, let's jump in and see what the cards have to say. Let's get it popping. Okay. <clears throat> Some rising Venus, Jupiter. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Show me the cards I need to see. Show me the cards that I need to see. What kind of love is coming towards my Pisces during the week of September 22nd into the 28th? Show me cards that I need to... Okay, see, all right. Feels good. Ooh, okay. Interesting. So... All righty, all righty then. So, <clears throat> Will of Fortune. All right. So this individual uh, believes that pursuing you specifically this week would definitely be with. They feel like the the wheel of fortune is moving in in in, in their direction towards a, having a positive outcome. Um, the reason that they look at you as being a positive, uh, a sense of positivity for them is because we got the Eight of Cups here. Uh, they just got finished walking away from um, a relationship that they were currently in. Feels like it was probably for a bit of time as well. Uh, so they just got finished walking. They, they, they just walked away from it. The will of fortune is turned in their favor. They finally had, you know, had just had enough, decided to walk away, and now they have their eyes on you. Now, we also, we have the world card here, all right? This sense of liberation, again, com completion of a journey thing, coming full circle, the end of a journey. Um, and they look at moving towards you being the end of the journey, the end of a cycle. Uh, in other words, love being right in front of them, in front of them the whole time. Um, and so they're moving and moving towards you. This individual is an earth sign individual. We got the Ace of Pentacles here, which is a, a Capricorn, a Virgo, or a Taurus. Now, also, they view you as a new opportunity, a great opportunity, as a matter of fact. Um, and they also feel there's a sense of feeling like they have the higher ground here with the Seven of Wands here. You know... Uh, probably with all the upheaval and nonsense they were dealing with, then they finally decide to move on and walk away from it. Um, there's a sense of there's a new opportunity. Them, the, the, them feeling that they have the higher ground, they feel like, you know, it's either now or never. This is the best opportunity that I'm ever going to have to really try to make this thing pop off, so I'm just going to go for it. So there's that type of thing going on right now. This, that's the headspace this person is in. Um, we also have here, we have the king of wands okay uh which is the fire sign individual um sagittarius leo or aries now this individual um i like to describe the king of wands energy as a person that kind of you know sees the whole picture sees, sees the big picture rather okay uh these guys are like fancy themselves to be born leaders being able to kind of like see see like a chess See the field like a chessboard. Be able to strategically make moves well ahead of time. The kind of, like I said, that's why I look at the at the larger picture here. And that's pretty much where this fire sign person is doing. It's just kind of sitting back in the cut, looking at the bigger picture, saying, "Okay, let's just see how this thing plays out. And then I'll go ahead and make my move." A lot of times, when you're dealing with multiple suitors, you know, it, people fall in either one of three categories. Uh, you got the person that'll just come right at you. You know, holla at you, yo, what's up, how you doing? You know, get all up in your space, evading your personal space. You got those types. You got those types that are, you know, kind of like trying to, uh, you know, do a little tantalizing flirting, you know, just kind of seeing where things are. And then you got those that kind of sit, sit in the cut, sit in the back and just kind of watch how everything plays out and just kind of get a, get a beat of, of everyone, all the players involved. And then they make their move. That's what this King of Wands is. That's that's when this person is going to make his make his or her move. Um, in addition, here they've done four of 
swords. So again, they've done a lot of contemplating on the situation. And so this is the move, this is the way that they want to handle this. And finally, also we have a Queen of Cups person here, which is a water sign energy. Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. Again, this person wants to be, they're looking at the perspective of they really want to be loyal and devoted towards you. So they're really, they're really kind of feeling you. But at the same time, there's this Five of Swords energy going on here like, <clears throat> should I? Shouldn't I? Should I stand and fight for this particular situation to pop off? Should I just walk away and just, you know, take my ball and go home pretty much? So that's pretty much where their mind here is with that. Possibly because they see the uh, other suitors that are going are actively pursuing you or, or, or either... Um, yeah, they they can see people actively pursuing you, or they it, there's just like this this buzz in the air, like you're hot, you're really you know you're really you're really giving emanating like this energy, and they're kind of feeling it, seeing it, like mm. you know before it was just like an easy an easy shot from A to B. Now it seems like there's a whole lot of obstacles in the way, so you know there's a lot of other options here. So do I pursue this? Do I not pursue this? That's that's the type of energy that they're dealing with here. So, with all that being said, let's see what kind of strengths you're going to be dealing with during the week of September 22nd. So, tell me what kind of strengths are you going to be dealing with? So, in other words, what positive perspective do you have? What's going to be able to give you greater clarity when dealing with any potential love interest uh, going forward? I just wanted to break that down a little bit to kind of give people like... Um, more of an idea when I say what the strengths are like it basically is what where your mental where mentally where you are uh, dealing with potential relationships here so give me an example if you're dealing with some if you're dealing with a situation where there's like um, I see someone that's like basically just like a player um, like what do you have what kind of strengths do you have that's going to better able help you navigate uh, dealing with this potential player or maybe like the ex of a return uh, a return of an ex or something like that um, That's toxic like what type of things do you have in your toolbox to better able help you to navigate dealing with the return of a toxic ex or something like that or um, On a positive note if you're dealing with someone there's like a lot of potential there What kind of tools do you have in your toolbox to be able to better help you connect with that person? Where's your headspace at? That's what I'm getting at here all right, so what kind of strengths are you doing from the week of September 22nd to the 28th? All right, so right off the gate, we've got a three of swords here. And so as I was describing before, this three of swords energy. So, you know, and the con again, it's all about, also all about context with my particular readings. That's that's my particular style. Everyone has their own particular style, their own particular uh, way that they, that they uh, uh, all of our definitions are pretty much all the same, but it's like how we, how we read the cards, the energy that we feel off the cards, how, you know, uh, intuitively what's coming through, that type of thing. So everyone, everyone's different. I'm a, I'm a little bit different. Well, some people, I'm way different to a lot of people, but um, it just really it, it just really depends on what messages you're trying to convey to your audience, which is you guys. So um, so in that, so in other words, this three this three of swords here. So this represents heartbreak, right? Um, third party situation heartbreak. So what I say is, since this is a strength, you flip it. You be like, well, okay, I tell you what. So you've experienced heartache with this situation, all right? You definitely experienced heartache, third party situation. But how we flip this into a positive and be like, hey, you know what? You've experienced that. So you're aware of this. So since this is a strength, because obviously it wouldn't be a strength, you're getting your heart broke. That's, that would be kind of silly, right? So you flip you say, okay, cool. You've experienced this. You've inoculated yourself against this. Or in other words, you've built coping skills to be able to help you better recognize someone engaging in the type of behavior that you experienced before, you know, Rather it be, um, you know, um, um, uh, just to give you a quick example here, um, then I'm just going to zoom through this. Um, a friend of mine was like, you know, you know how I knew that I was being cheated on? I'm like, how? Like, because 
they took a lot more showers than they usually did. So uh, usually, I guess this person just like laid around the house a lot, didn't really do much of anything, and then you know, and that was just like the nature of their relationship, and they kind of noticed like, wow, this person is taking like this person went from taking like you know maybe like. Um, uh, maybe four showers a week. They're like taking like eight showers a week, like, like double, almost triple. They were like, "Wait, what's going on here?" And that's how they found out that that person was cheating. You know, so basically, um, it's kind of like that. You know, you build, you you build an awareness to recognize certain behaviors that weren't there before, that become visible and then you're like wait a minute what's going on with that kind of your spidey sense starts tingling like hey what's up so basically that type of thing i'm sorry to digress into the story i know some of you probably gonna find it kind of gross but i'm sorry but i'm just giving an example all right uh so at any rate so um you've experienced uh, a three of swords situation you've inoculated yourself against it so you know to recognize it when you see it also in addition here we have the seven of wands here so you feel like you have the higher ground. You know what you want. You're pretty adamant about it. You'll stand your ground and you'll speak your mind, all right? In addition here, we have the Ten of Pentacles. So, you know, you're thinking about legacy long term, building something solid for you, your family, something that's going to continue even after you're no longer there. You're trying to build some sense of, of, of wealth that's going to continue. A sense of The wealth can be a sense of Finance, mostly, most of the time, pentacles deal with finance, deal with money, deal with coins, all right? But this could also mean, hey, not only dealing with the coin aspect of it, but also building up a mentality, uh, 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 you know, building up a mentality that creates the mindset to be able to create wealth for uh, for your family, get to, to be able to put them in the right head space to be able to generate their own wealth, rather be through entrepreneurship, you know, if, if you're an entrepreneur, you teach them how to be an entrepreneur, teach them how to, like, you know, recognize business opportunities, that type of thing. If you're really, really good at school, you really champion college, like, let's you go to college, you go to the best schools, and you kind of, that, that kind of mentality gets pushed through to your children, and then they take that mentality with them. So it's basically creating a legacy, something that's going to be long-lasting, rather being a form of something tangible, being coins, or something mentally or mentality um, that you pass on to your children to create generational wealth okay so that's that in addition here we have the page of wands which is very exploratory energy so you're very curious about things you're in amounts of passion and just overall curiosity so you have an intellectual curiosity to explore also we got the two of cups here so this is soulmate thing, a, a best friend, a soulmate, someone that you can really rock with, or ride, ride or die with. Not a twin flame, soulmate's different. People have more than one soulmate. There's only one twin flame. A twin flame is someone that completes you. That's the other half of you. I know some people kind of mix the two up a lot of times, don't know the difference between the two. I know it's very confusing. I was confused at first, a long time ago too, but there is a difference. So you're looking for a soulmate. All right. In addition here, you are. Um, we have this um, <clears throat> two of swords here. So you know you're at an impasse right now. You know you're. You don't know if you want to go this way, that way. You just kind of like impasse. You're just waiting to see what kind of things come your way, and you're then you'll take it from there. We got the Knight of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles here. So you're very methodical. Again. Methodical, a lot of times people associate that with being kind of devious, you know, devious behavior, being methodical. Um, I don't view it that way. I'll just switch out the word methodical, pull back in strategic. So you're a very strategic thinker in how you move, how you think, how you see things. So you're, you're very reasonable, very responsible, very reliable. But you're also very strategic in how you approach a situation. All right? Uh, so those are your strengths. So with that being said, so let's see what type of things from your past could possibly affect the outcome of this situation. So what I mean by that is when I say what type of things from your past could potentially affect the outcome of a potential love interest. So in other words, you have these potential love interests here. And what kind of things from your past, either positive or could affect either positive or negative? An example would be... Let's say I, I, I draw the uh, judgment card. So that's like usually the card where 
you know, as a, you know, a reconnect with an ex or something like that. Or like, or like the Six of Cups. And so, um, you know, if I see that as far as your strength goes, cool. I'm like, all right, cool. So if this person comes along, you're open to it. Looks like this could possibly affect things in a positive way. And if that ex comes back, if there's these potential love interest suitors here, if there's a possibility you're getting your ex being getting back with your ex could like mess all that up. Pretty much, you'll go back with your ex first instead of pursuing other these other potential opportunities for relationship. Also, inversely, if your ex comes along and there's like a lot of toxicity there, it could kind of mess up things for these other potential individuals because you're just feeling like, yeah, you know, especially if I see it, see a lot of like, uh, a lot of ten of swords, um, nine of swords, uh, the double card, the tower moment, things like that. It's like, whoa, that was a lot of negativity connected to this individual. So this individual comes along and, and, and this and that. It's going to count, you know what I mean? So sometimes somebody coming back into your life can draw, in other words, can draw out negative emotions and they can kind of fuck it up for everybody else. And so that's pretty much where I'm going with that, just to give you guys an idea, right? So that was a little tutorial on my reading style. I just feel like I would put that out there so you guys know where I'm coming from to give you a little bit of a window into how my mind works and how I interpret what I'm what I'm see what I'm seeing and how I'm interpreting what I'm saying. All right. So in other words, let's jump back into this. What type of things from the past could possibly affect the outcome of this potential situation? What type of things in the past could possibly affect the outcome of this situation? Cards I need to see. Cards I need to see. And cards that I need to see. Okay. So funny enough, right? Judgment card, reconnect. So, the return of an ex here. So, in this case, I have not seen anything here that tells me, hey, um, you were dealing with heartache. So, I'm saying, you know what? As a strength, you dealt with it. So, the possible reconnecting of an ex coming back into the situation could possibly mess this thing up for these individuals. Being as though that you may end up going back with this individual. It's a possibility. It doesn't look very likely, but it's a possibility that you may. And it's also a possibility that it can mess it up for everybody because, again, you pretty much dealt with a broken heart situation. So if this person comes back into your life, it just may make you kind of, um, kind of like the thought of a relationship kind of repels you. So that's that. So basically, again, that's what this situation is. Eight of Cups. If these particular, none of these particular situations, because in the past you dealt with situations where there was a bit of deceit. So the Eight of Cups says, well, you know what? If there's a particular situation here where, where you're going to pop on, any, any of these cylinders pop on, any of this, Eight of Cups says you'll walk away. You're not going to, you'll just walk away and you'll just kind of like scrap the whole thing and you'll start over. So that's pretty much what your mindset is with that. And finally, here we have the King of Swords. King of Swords is a very, is again, very, making very wise, strong, wise choices when it comes in terms of strength and foundation. So if you're dealing with a situation where you're not able to be able to be able to be yourself, to be able to make a strong, solid decision. In other words, if someone tries to tell you which way is up, don't allow you to be your own person, to think for yourself, you're pretty much going to bounce because you don't want to be controlled. So that being said, what type of things, what other things Spirit wants to throw upon you before I shut this thing down? What other additional information do you guys, Spirit's happy before I shut this thing down? Show me cards I need to see, show me cards I need to see, show me cards that I need, need to see. All right. Of course, good example, alchemy. Favorite card and whole oracle deck. All right, so in this particular deck, with it's a sacred earth oracle deck, in case you guys want to know, um, alchemy transmutation. So transforming from one thing to another. Again, the analogy I, the analogy I like to give is from transforming from a caterpillar to a butterfly. So it, a transmutation, transforming from lead to gold. So most it's a positive light. So you're transforming from the way you were. 
the person that you are and moving into the person the best uh the best person to, so in other words you become a person that's living their best life so you transform from one particular aspect of life to another from something not necessarily saying is negative but you're transforming to your higher self you know and, and that's what the uh, alchemy card is all about transformation in a positive sense transforming from one thing to another so in other words if you're a victim or have a victim mentality transforming from yourself from the victim to a victor you know if you're a person that's closed off from love transforming your, yourself to a person that's more open to receiving love um uh you know that sort of thing so you get where you get where you get where i'm going with this um secondly unity so being one with someone the potential here lies with one of these individuals to become become a, a, a single unit with them um if you will um, a twin flame type of connection you're looking for. So a twin flame is the other half of who you are. Uh, and their potential exists here. Potential uh, uh, opportunity exists here for you to be one with this individual. Um, and so, and finally here, we have surface. This is a card that I get a lot as well. And again, because, again, surface meaning... They are the face. That's the face that people show you. It could be nefarious because they're looking to kind of get over, kind of being deceitful, deceptive. Um, that very, you know, nine times, well, I can say nine times out of ten, 65% of the time, that's that's what it is. People kind of trying to be deceitful, trying to put on, um, trying to be somebody that they're not for their own selfish reasons. But then there's the flip side of that where um, a person puts on a, a, the best possible face that they can. Um, you know, we all do when we're trying to impress somebody. So, to a certain extent, when we first meet somebody, you know, we try to be as authentic, authentic as we can. But what is all, we, we kind of put on the, the best version of ourselves because we want to leave a good impression. But... You know, there's only two main reasons that really someone would do this with a card like this would pop out. Because the card was not going to pop out for that. Just putting on your best possible face to just be like cool with somebody so they can think positive of you. You know what I mean? Want to leave a good impression. This Oracle card would pop out for that. It would pop out to say, listen, you need to kind of like um, keep your eyes open because this person or this potential situation, even though there's positivity here, they're, they're with other individuals in, in this reading. They're putting they're they're putting on a face that's not there, so they could possibly be in, be in the fairies trying to get over. But the other reason is, as I was alluding to before, was because maybe they don't have a whole lot of self confidence, um, and so they put on the, their best possible face that they can because they want you to like them. Um, they want you to give them the time of day, and hoping that um, you know that you'll get to love this version of them and then slowly but surely once you get to know the real them that they'll kind of you'll still want to kind of hang in there with them to be like oh okay so there's there's also that like there's two different perspectives on the surface card M one which is 65 percent of the time that's what it is then you got the rest of the time where it's kind of like uh you know the other 35 percent where it's like this individual is putting on his face because they're they just want you to like them. They want you. you they want you to give them the time of day. So, boom, okay, enough of that. So, let me just shut this thing down. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. Sorry for the, like the little tutorial. Um, I just wanted to kind of put it out there, kind of give you guys pull open the lid a little bit, give you guys an insight to the workings of my mind um, and my intuition and how that works and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, again, this is a general love reading. I want to stress the general part, all right? If it doesn't resonate with you, that's cool. You can still get a personal reading. If it did resonate with you, that's cool. You can also still get a personal reading. Um, if this isn't you, if, again, it's general. Save the hate mail, please. It's, it's a waste of your time and a waste of mine. Um, love you guys. Positive love and blessings to all of you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.